Do you ever wonder how all the different ligatures available can affect your saxophone sound? In this video, I'm gonna play on a bunch of different ligatures and give you my honest, unfiltered reaction to each one. J Metcalf here from bettersax.com. And if you like saxophone videos like the one you're about to watch right now, do me a quick favor, drop me one of these and make sure you are subscribed. So the other day I was trying out a bunch of different ligatures on my new Better Sax Burn In mouthpiece. And I thought this would make a great video because while there is no life-changing differences from one ligature to the next, there are some subtle things worth pointing out. I still get asked all the time, what ligature should I buy? So I made this comparison video in the hopes that it will somehow help you make a better decision or realize that maybe you don't even need to get a new ligature after all. I'm gonna demo about a dozen interesting ligatures for you and I put chapter markers in this video so you can jump around and compare them as you like. I'm gonna be playing the same musical example on all of the ligatures. Let me know in the comments below if you recognize the alto player I lifted this line from. Extra credit if you can also name the recording it comes from. I'll be demonstrating everything on the brand new Better Sax Burnin alto mouthpiece and I put a link in the description below to where you can find more information on how to pick one of these up for yourself. As you listen, let us know if you hear any differences between the various ligatures or if they all just sound exactly the same to you. I'm using the exact same reed for all the examples and that reed stays in the exact same position on the mouthpiece throughout. I've recorded everything on this Biodynamic M160 ribbon mic, which is a great choice for getting high quality saxophone audio. We're gonna do everything from super cheap to super expensive and a bunch in between. I happen to have a lot of let's say the high-end fancy ligatures. And I can tell you right now that they're all good. Um, are they uh, that much better than the super cheap ones? Let's find out. The first ligature we're gonna try is this plain old cheapo standard two screw inexpensive ligature. <laughs> Yeah, um, the only thing I have against this ligature is it's got two screws. That's it. Sounds good to me though. Okay, next up is a Harrison ligature. This is one of these old vintage ligatures that aren't made anymore. And there was a lot of mythology about these ligatures, like there's some sort of magical, amazing ligature. Let's see. <laughs> Sounds great. Um, I can't say that I've noticed any difference from this one. So um, now you might recognize this Harrison ligature because there is a copy of this ligature out today by Diodario. The only difference is this plate he here is a bit thicker. That's the only difference that I could see visually. <laughs> My very first impression was that it was slightly um, heavier or darker or, I don't know. Like there was a bit more meat to it. But it's kind of, you know, it's hard to say if it's in my imagination or not. Okay, so that's three ligatures down. I've had this ligature. This is a Vendor and Optimum. I've had this ligature 20 years at least. So one nice thing I will say about Vendor and Optimum ligature is that you definitely, it's gonna last you a long time. Okay, this is the first ligature out of all the ones that I've tried that feels to, to really give me something 
nice. Uh, but it's also like really the first pro, let's say pro ligature. I had, for those who are keeping score, I'm using this plate, the one with the two um, horizontal lines. It comes with three different plates. I never really noticed much of a difference between the plates. And I just have this one on there, not for any particular reason. Next, I've got this ligature. This one I've got, I've had this lying around. This is a ligophone ligature, I guess in some sort of black nickel plate. And it's got this, it seems like some sort of heavy duty fabric on the bottom where it contacts the reed and it holds the reed in place. And then it's got these odd little um, antennas on it. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds good. Maybe a tiny little bit darker and more covered, but maybe just a tiny little bit. Maybe. Here's an interesting, here's a weird ligature. This one is from this company called Bamboo. And I think it's neat because it's just like strings. You get it on there and whatever. It's kind of a pain, but it's neat. And you could tighten these up. <laughs> Now, honestly, I thought from looking at it somehow this would dampen the sound and make it darker. I don't, I don't feel that or hear that. Plays great. Um, you know, once you get this one set. It just kind of fits. You don't have to really adjust it anymore. Um, it's kind of like one of those ligatures that don't have a, you know, you just kind of push it on there. Not the easiest to work with, but it does the job and they come in all different colors. Uh, another ligature by that same company, it's a similar sort of deal, like this woven thing, but it's got this big, super heavy mass screw and a plate that is removable. And again, they come in all different colors. Nice, nice. I can't, um, I couldn't really say if there's a big difference between this or any difference between this and the other ones I've played. This is a Sios ligature. It's just a 3D printed plastic ring and it sort of fits on this mouthpiece. It's actually, it doesn't fit great. It's a little too small for this mouthpiece, but whatever. I mean, other than the fact that it doesn't really fit my mouthpiece, does a job. Sounds pretty pretty much like the other ones, feels like the other ones. If it was a blind test, there was no way I would be able to say, ooh, that's the the you know 3D printed plastic ring that doesn't fit. No way. In a million years. This now is the Jody Jazz Power Ring. This one is designed to fit, make a perfect fit with this particular mouthpiece. And it does. <laughs> Okay, now, I mean, that, I feel a difference. So, that, I mean, but, you know, this, you're putting them, this is heavy. I mean, this is a heavy thing. You're adding a fair bit of solid metal. That I feel a difference. You know, and maybe I'm making it up in my mind, but it does feel like you've got some more weight to the sound and it's a bit um, heavier. Especially down in the, the low ranges. Like, okay. So, yeah. All right, that one makes a difference. Is it a, enough of a difference that I would get it right in a blind test every time? I don't know, probably not. This is the Thiawani Enlightened Ligature. Yeah, 
plays great. I can't say that I've noticed a big difference on this one. Although, I mean, everything plays great. I'm just gonna point out ones that seem somehow different. Oh, you know what? All right, let's put this one on. This one is uh, Marc Jean, I think. And it's got this big ebonite plate on the bottom and the rest of it is gold-plated brass, I believe. Yeah, that one, I feel a, a more of a weight. So far, when there's, I find when there's more material here, I, I have some sort of more material, material here, it's having some sort of effect on making the sound feel heavier, bigger, I don't know. But I mean, it's, it's small. So I feel like there is some sort of a difference or some sort of a benefit from this ligature as well. Here's one. This is a Peter Yesen ligature. These are handmade. Uh, they look really cool. They're sort of vintage because there's no lacquer. Well, at least the one I've got, there's no lacquer on it. Two screws, though. I'm not a fan of two screws, but it is retro, I guess, the two screw ligature. <laughs> say I really like that one, but do I like it a lot better than any of the other ones? Can't really say. Here's the BG duo in the rose gold plating. There's something different about this ligature but I can't really put my finger on it. It's definitely um, good. <laughs> Although I have to say, I mean, I doubt any of this really comes out in the recording. Anyway, another great ligature. Sounds good. My impression of this would be that there's some sort of boost, some sort of minor boost in certain frequencies that's just barely perceptible. Here is a Rovner Versa. It's got three separate metal plates on the bottom. So let's see. Yeah, okay. So there's some, there's some meatiness in there. Yeah, there's some meatiness in there. Mm. Okay, now I have to put take these uh, off and put them on without disturbing the reed. The reed has not moved. The reed is still in its original um, connection with the mouthpiece. Okay, so now I'm doing this thing where you can you can move this so like this. I don't want to call this fabric. It's well, it's some sort of material here. Um, anyway, that's now between the reed and the mouthpiece. I don't know what difference this is supposed to make, or somebody told me once, and I can't remember. So let's just see if we notice a difference and if we can kind of put that into words. <laughs> My first impression is that it somehow takes away the um, meatiness, the aforementioned meatiness. Yeah, so I think uh, I prefer it in the original configuration with the metal in contact with the reed. Nice ligature. 
another Rovner ligature. It's just their, their sort of rubbery, hard, very flexible material. But you know, all these Rovner ligatures, they have these big metal pieces on the top that are supposed to impact the sound in some way. So let's throw this one on there. Okay, first impression is way darker and sort of covered. Let me try to get it further down on the mouthpiece. Yeah, that is clearly darker for me. So if you were, I mean, that seems to have kind of toned down some of the higher frequencies. So if you were looking for a more darker sound, that would be something to experiment with maybe. Okay, here's one that I've been playing a lot lately. This is the Yanni Sixes ligature. <laughs> Yeah, so my impressions of this one is it's kind of it's kind of neutral, meaning not on a bright end, not on the darker, heavier end. It's kind of a very neutral in the middle. Now here are my thoughts on ligatures. You need a ligature. The ligature holds the reed onto the mouthpiece. It's a necessary component for the saxophone. If you are serious about playing the saxophone, you should probably get yourself a pretty nice ligature. Um, if you get a nice one on your mouthpiece, and it's a standard size mouthpiece, it's probably something you will keep and use for many, many years, if not your entire life. So it can be a very worthwhile investment. I think I paid around $100 for my, where is it, where is it? For my Optimum, my Van Doren Optimum Alto ligature a long time ago and I still got it and it still plays great. So, you know, that was a worthwhile investment. Now, while I can clearly detect small differences between different ligatures, they're small. Um, and, you know, I've been playing saxophone seriously and professionally for many, many years. So if I can barely perceive a difference, um, and, you know, from one day to the next, that I might not feel the same exact difference. Uh, you know, it's pretty subtle. So if you have a lot less experience and are somewhat new to playing the saxophone, I wouldn't get too caught up in which ligature you've got. The most important criteria is that you get a ligature that fits well and works. And really for me, the third criteria after that is something that is pleasing to look at or you know it pleases you in some aesthetic way. If you're looking to improve your sound, you're not going to improve your sound with a ligature really. You're going to improve your sound number one by practicing, by getting a, a, a good mouthpiece that suits the sound you're, you're trying to achieve, keeping your saxophone well maintained and cleaned and the pads sealing. Um, the room you're playing in is going to have more impact on the sound that's coming back to your ear than the ligature is. Um, and you will, and you can experiment with this, take your saxophone and play it in different rooms of your house. The sound changes a lot in the same room, change the direction you point your saxophone and you're going to notice more of a sound difference than you will with a ligature. I'm just throwing that out there. So I'm not saying ligatures are entirely unimportant. There's just a lot of things that are much more important to your sound than the ligature. How much should I spend on a ligature? You know, you can stick with the cheapo ligature that came with your saxophone, play on that forever, and nobody's ever gonna notice a difference in your sound really. Uh, the day you do upgrade to a nicer ligature, you will be happy that you did probably. You're not gonna regret having spent a hundred bucks on a nice ligature that lasts you forever. Uh, it's a worthwhile purchase. You know, if you are a saxophone nerd, geek like me, having lots of different ligatures is fun, things to collect. You, you know, you got different things to play on and, and try out different things. But I'm never 
honestly, I'm never thinking, oh, I want my sound to be like this on the Geek Tonight. So I'm going to choose this ligature. And I mean, it doesn't work that way. So if you're trying to decide which ligature to buy for your mouthpiece, I hope this video has been helpful on some level for you to make that decision or to decide not to buy a new ligature or whatever. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon in the next Better Sax video. Thank <laughs> you.